Hello my art loving friends! We are on the floor of my studio today because every time I walk in my studio I see this stuff and it kind of stresses me out so it's time that we take care of it. So the reason this stuff is here is because it's from my grandma's house and I thought we should, well most of it's from my grandma's house I guess, uh, I thought we should go through it. I'll show you what she had in her house that's kind of fun and artsy and I'm not going to keep it all, but I brought it here to go through it, see what we might want to keep in here and what the girls might want, and we'll just go from there. This is the cord, not from her house. <laughs> this is to my computer, and it will connect to the TV. So I'm going to put this in the cords bin right over here. Luckily, it was close. Are you biting my feet? You're biting my feet. And I have this lovely bag. This is not from my grandma's house. This was that birthday gift from one of you guys. And I think maybe today we can find some stuff to put in it, or eventually, because it's so darn cute. These I got her as a gift a long time ago, because I started my art journey thinking I was going to be a colored pencil artist, and decided later watercolor was more of my thing. So these are the Prismacolor pencils. And I believe I got her the 150 set. So both of these have Prismacolor pencils in them because this case cannot hold 150 pencils. So she separated them into two cases and they are currently covered in cat hair, but that's okay. Here is, yeah, so I got her the 150 case because she did keep <laughs> the box. And I thought because I also have my set of 150 Prismacolor colored pencils and my mom's set of, I think she had the 120 set. We probably don't need to keep my grandma's set, so I could put them back in the box and probably resell them. Some mail. My mail. <laughs> she had these bins here, and they were actually empty bins. I put some stuff in them. This is not from her house, and this is not from her house. I tend to stack things where other things are stacked. You guys do that? So I put these in there from her house. These are tiny little stamps, and I don't think any of them have been opened. No, they're all sealed. But they're little square stamps and I thought it would be so fun to do a pixel painting with these squares. So basically I will stamp a square, some color, and a whole big piece of paper. We could make some kind of image in square format. So this is a future video idea. So I have these here, although I think some are duplicates. Yes. Okay, so this is the only duplicate here. So we can probably let that one go and then there's these four that are round which I probably won't use and in this bin were some stamps she and I used to go scrapbooking together all the time but these were sayings sentiments that you could stamp in cards and that is one thing from my scrapbooking days that I do still use today so very useful I'm going to put those with my other stamps and the girls know they're here they can come use them although they are so busy right now, they don't really have time for art, it seems like. Except for my daughter-in-law, she tends to make some time for it. Okay, acrylic paint from US Art Supply. 36 tubes of it here. This is the size. Kind of intriguing. I tend to keep acrylic paint around because I have this idea that I'm going to do palette knife painting with it and use a bunch of it up, and if that never happens, then my daughter-in-law really likes acrylic paint too, so that could go to her. Let's get the stuff on the floor back here. We have a cartridge pen that looks ancient, but has never been opened. 80 cents, Mesa Drug Company. I bet you that company is no longer in that town. And another one without the cartridges. That might be fun to try. She had a little Bao Hong watercolor pad. How cool is that? It's hot press. I've never tried the Bao Hong hot press, so we're definitely putting that in our inventory. And then very shortly before we lost her, she had bought a bunch of watercolor books. These are really fun. She has Mako's or Mako's watercolor book and she has a great YouTube channel. She doesn't post on it very often anymore, but she does still post on it. So she got that book. She got Jenna Rainey's book, a modern watercolor botanicals book by Sarah Simon. I haven't heard of her. So these are going to be really fun to look through. This one that I got her, I showed this to you on my channel a long time ago, but it shows the colored picture and then it has the outlines in the back so you can just trace the outlines onto your watercolor paper and practice watercolor techniques without learning to draw. It's really neat. I actually showed my students this book and encouraged them to buy it and try it. 
now that it's back in my possession, perhaps I'll bring this into class and we'll do one or two of them. I think that would be really fun. Watercolor success in four steps, Marina Bakasova. So she was trying to get into watercolor a lot, apparently. Gouache in four easy steps. Very cool. Anna, I don't know how to say the last name, but this could be a fun one to go through. A Beginner's Guide to Watercolor by Jody Merrill, if I can read the cursive on that correctly. And then this is one of those coloring books that I got her that's from a Ukrainian author. And the paper in here is not super thick, but it also feels very nice at the same time, so this could be fun to try. All right, last thing loose on the floor over here is the Cali Art Art Markers. Oh, are these alcohol markers? Doesn't say, let's see if we can smell them. Pretty sure that smells like alcohol. <laughs> we'll have to look that up to know for sure, but oh my goodness, look at this selection. Wow, I had no idea those were in there. That's potentially very fun. I do like markers a lot. I don't tend to use them very often because I only have, I don't know, 24 Copics and that probably sounds like a lot to you, but if you don't have the pastel colors and I don't really, then it's hard to do marker art properly or easily. So this looks like it has a lot of pastel colors in it. So maybe, definitely putting that on the list to try and adding it to the inventory, even though my marker shelf is uh, very full. Mostly full with Poscas and other acrylic markers and water-based markers over there. So I do have a couple of Marabou alcohol markers and a few Spectrum Noir ones, not very many. And back here, we're just a bunch of miscellaneous, they feel like mostly oil painting brushes to me. And I did take some out and bring to my students to use because some of the brushes that the college bought for the students to use just have started to fall apart and aren't very good. And so picked some out of here, it was good to have these. And there's also some miscellaneous other brushes in here that I could probably donate to the college as well. I'll have to go through that. And then I do oil paint a lot, but I tend to have brushes that are already used for that. So I'm not sure what I'll do with the rest. We'll figure that out later. So I think what I tried to do at her house, put only gel pens in this box. So this is an entire box of gel pens. It's crazy. So this has gel pens in it. This has gel pens in it and refill case in there. Refill here. It's kind of ironic though because you get these refills and neither the pins nor the refills are labeled. So basically you're just guessing at the color here, putting it in a random pin and hoping for the best. And yeah, these are all gel pins. Okay. Oh, I made a mess. We'll have to fix that later. No need to show you all these individually, it's just a bunch of gel pins. And this everything's dusty because it was all sitting in random places in her house and now in my house and the cats walked all over it. So these, oh, these are watercolor brush pens, I believe. Yeah, the Arteza brush pens. And I tried these, I think a long time ago, I bought the 12 or 24 set. Didn't like them very much at that time, but they are good. They're kind of fun to use in the, like the Christy Rice coloring books because that paper is not very good. So it works much better with a marker type of application instead of real watercolor, so that's something. Oh, I was looking for these. <laughs> these are tape refills for the double-sided tape I often use when I'm doing cards and stuff, like putting my watercolor pictures on a card. So it's acid-free, archival, all of that. And I have the tape gun that these refills go in and I ran out of refills, so that's good. We have a General's heat transfer pencil. I don't know much about that, but it sounds kind of intriguing. And then we have Arteza Woodless Watercolor Pencils. That could be fun to try. More Arteza Real Brush Pens. I suspect maybe she got this 24 set first and then got the bigger set over here that I showed you a minute ago. So we probably have extra colors, duplicates in this that we could pass on. Tombow Dual Brush Pens. I know a lot of you guys out there love these. I have a few that have come in our subscription boxes, but I haven't really tried them out that I know of. Nice Tupperware that's ancient, but could be useful. I brought this bag down just this morning because I'm doing the Minimal Moms Bag A Day Challenge in February, where you're supposed to fill up a bag a day with stuff leaving your house. So I was hoping I could come up with some stuff in here that was leaving my house. And I guess <laughs> if I kind of cheat, I don't know, it's not really cheating. This is accurate. 
put that and these in there. I'll probably keep the pencil cases, but you get the point. And then if these are duplicates, they, they could go. So there we go. Did I fill my bag a day? I think I did. Oh, and then we have this big box of stuff. A couple of cute little ruled notebooks. I have so many notebooks in the house, I don't really need them, but they're really cute. And I tend to be a tiny bit of a notebook paper hoarder. <laughs> I tend to never let them go and try and use them, but I doubt I'll use them up in my lifetime. You know how that goes. I buy them some kind of fine liner pins, more fine line pins. These fine liner things are really good for the coloring books that have the little tiny fine details that you have to fill in. I use them for that and they're pretty fun like that. A very fancy Copic marker sketchbook. Ooh, that's very nice. Man, I hate to pull all this stuff out. It's so well organized in here. Some Liquitex acrylics. Look quite old, but who knows? Some more. And we have a Skylight Studio burnt sienna acrylic paint and a Grumbacher white acrylic paint. Add that to the acrylics. Little pencil sharpener that's battery operated that I got her. These are blending and distressing inks that came in an art subscription box that I gave to her. I think I'll put that in the bag to go. Another pencil sharpener, random water markers, koi brush coloring pens, some microns, some gel pens. So these must have just been, I think, probably in a bag she had to go on a trip or something. She picked some goodies out to bring with her maybe. Another tape gun that goes with those refills. Pencil sharpener, some kind of watercolor card things. Sign pens, is that what these are called? Yeah, brush sign pens. Some colored pencils, 72 of them to be exact. They say they are Sioux Color Soft Series. Zyar Paint Markers, I've never heard of that brand, but I do love paint markers. Could be fun to try. And then the Millennium Collection here. I don't know what these are, but they're by Kiritaki, so they're probably pretty darn nice. We'll play with those, not today, <laughs> but eventually. Oil Color Pencils. Oh, I got her this fan palette. It's a superior, well, it's supposed to, it's like the superior watercolor palette. This one actually says the brand is Script Tract. <laughs> 42 watercolor colors here. The Stabilo Pin 68. I have a lot of these too, and I love to use them in those fine detail coloring books, just like I was telling you about with the other pins. Fashion Shimmer Spray. I do not like this stuff. It's going. Bye-bye. <laughs> Some Talon's Art Creation watercolors. I believe I also got these in an art subscription box, and I don't know if these are the ones I got and I gave to her, or if she got her own. Colored fine liners again. A selection of Sharpie colors. So these are alcohol based. Could use them like alcohol markers, except the point is a little finer than some. Ah, a finger oxygen meter. <laughs> That's funny. Ooh, this is that mechanical pencil that when I opened all the art subscription boxes from her house, I was missing. I had the ink refills, or the ink refills. I had the lead refills for it, but I couldn't find the pencil, and here it is. So luckily I still have that right in the drawer behind me in the desk, so that's handy. These are the Cedar Color Markers. I have a set of these as well. They came with a really cool coloring book. This one, actually. <laughs> so I have my own of this, and it looks like she colored in a little bit more than I did. I have a few pages colored in, but since I already have this set, I can let this go too. The pretty excellent set of watercolors that I gave her. I have my own set, probably don't need two, so I may put this in a giveaway. So we'll put that in the bag. It's not like I'm taking this bag to the trash or the thrift store right now. I have to actually do stuff with it, but it's still leaving the house eventually, right? The Skin Colored Pencils by Black Widow, Dark Tones and Light Tones. I had just gifted her this album, and it's to keep track of birthdays in different months, and she didn't have a chance to use it, sadly. Microns, always useful. The Brunzil Watercolor Pencils, I believe I gave that to her. 12 Oil Pastels Color & Co. Could be fun to compare. Another taper, but I don't have refills that would fit this, so we'll use it up and pass it along. And then we have coloring books, butterflies. Looks like she painted, painted. <laughs> she colored in quite a few of these. Flying colors. See, she actually used her coloring books. More coloring books. So even if these are completely full, I kept them because it's going to be fun to maybe scan them in, put them on cards for people, or do the, you know, the end of the year grandma's coloring book gift for people. It's just kind of neat. Yeah, this one is completely filled in. Some graph paper. I actually use graph paper quite often because I tend to buy homes and redo them. And 
It's nice to just sketch it out on graph paper. I like doing that better than using the computer. The Native American Spirit coloring book. Wow, the paper in here is really thick. And she has quite a few colored in towards the back, but all the middle is empty. That will be fun to do <laughs> in my spare time, right? Okay, Mountain Life coloring book from Colorado. I got this for her. I saw it when I was traveling and thought she would enjoy it because she likes coloring books. Ooh, look at that. Pretty. Home sweet home. I also thought this was a pretty cool one. I'm impressed how much she colored. Cats. And there's only one done in there. Ooh, you guys just saw in my very last video the Sukum's coloring book. Now I had the one from 2018 and I gave her this one. It was the 2017 version. And I got her the watercolor one too, but she used colored pencil and maybe some marker in it instead. And I'm like, Grandma, you know those pretty excellent watercolors I gave you? And the coloring book is watercolor paper. It would be fun for you to try some of these in watercolors. I think that's what she was maybe going to try and do with this one. This is the 2019 version of the same thing. Oh no, she filled this one in too. Oh, not completely. I mean, it's okay that she used pencil and other mediums, just fine, but oh, these are watercolor pencils. So she did use watercolor pencils. I just think it's so cute. They're, they're actually beautiful. They turned out great. It's just fun, funny. Hearts coloring book. Wow, that's intricate, yikes. This was the first coloring book I gave her from that Ukrainian author, or maybe it was the second one, I don't know. But regardless, I had given her both of the ones that I had bought. Fanciful Faces, she loved this one, she said, but she didn't, oh no, it was the ladies one that she used, which is kind of ladies, but doesn't matter. Ancient Polaris Notebook, have to keep that. Let There Be Love. So some of these she would color and then put on Valentine's cards, although this particular book only has, looks like two pages colored in it. Springtime mandalas. She did a lot in that one. Aw, teacup kittens. Oh, this one's a little different. It has a place for notes and some sayings in it. That's kind of nice. The 30 days of creativity book I got her. Let's see if she did much in that. Just in the beginning, but I also got her the calendar. So I know she filled out the calendar. Watercolor flowers, just add watercolor. Hmm. Uh, this will be fun for us to try out. Looks like she didn't try it at all. Well, that empties that. Last thing from her house that I grabbed. There's still room and a closet full of stuff down there, but brought back what I could handle. <laughs> so I filled this. Here we have oil pastels from Crayola. Some more score tape. You guys know I use that all the time. And then we have these La Plume 2 pastels and standard colors. Dual, they're like dual brush pens. Oh yes, I was gonna try and keep this one all sketchbooks and stuff. Some more refills for the gun and another gun. Plastic palette knife and some random Le Plume markers that probably didn't fit in the set. I bet they came in an art subscription box and then she liked them and bought some more. I bet that's what happened. Arteza watercolor premium pad. It's a regular, very big sketchbook. Two pages used, paper, probably medium weight. Tritone colored pencils from Koi Noor. Yeah, these are the ones with the different colors in one pencil kind of thing. And we got these in an art subscription box. Cool Bank 160 colored pencils. Wow. <laughs> one thing I will say about her though is she actually used her colored pencils. Anything that she could use that went with her coloring books, she pretty much went through. We have some Let's Resin alcohol inks. I do love alcohol inks, so I'll add that to the collection and someday we'll get back to that. There's a, I have the door shut because I have the laundry going and the cat just can't handle the door shut. She's over there banging on it. I'm gonna ignore her. Another one of her sketchbooks with all of her beautiful Zen tangles in that. So the last, what, third of the sketchbook is not used, but I'll have to scan the beginning pages in and make another book for the family. Tiny little sketchbook full of her Zentangles. Ah, oh, they're beautiful. Can't wait to go through them again in more detail. Another sketchbook, empty. Another watercolor sketchbook. Looks like she did a few things in it. And another one. So there's three of these. We could probably pass one on to someone else. Or maybe two. 
This came in an art subscription box. Oh no, I think this is something I bought in a buy it, try it, and gave to her actually. That was a fun video. I'll link that in the corner for you if you missed that. And in the description box below. It was actually one of my first-ish videos that I did on the channel, but it was fun. I used this for cutting wrapping paper, so that'll be useful. And some family pictures, fun. So go through those. Strathmore sketchbook. This will be good for my drawing class. I actually love the big sketchbooks like this because I don't like to sketch directly on my watercolor paper. And if I have a nice big sketchbook like this, I can sketch it out and then transfer it to my watercolor paper. So I actually do use these big sketchbooks somewhat often. And you guys are gonna love this last thing. Canson watercolor paper. How old do you think this is? <laughs> 120 pounds. Oh look, she did some little watercolor doodles. This looks like a stamp actually, so she probably colored the stamp and then stamped it on. But still, looks kinda neat. So yeah, very machine textured watercolor paper here. And it's that thin filling stuff that you know maybe probably isn't sized all that well. At least I know the back side of this paper won't be sized. I can feel that right away. Oh, I was hoping there'd be a date on it. That would be so fun to know. No date. Plus the basket itself is kind of cool. And then there's a little like toolbox thing right here that has, I think it's oil painting supplies in it. I guess we'll look real quick. All right, let's see. Sportsman's dry box. Not oil painting supplies. I think this is the tub she brought with us when we went to a watercolor class together like 20 years ago. So there's some Grumbacher Academy watercolors, miscellaneous stuff in here, spray bottles, some brushes, ugh, the Niji watercolors. Eh. <laughs> but hey, we had a good time. Buckets, water buckets, another palette knife, some toilet paper, salt. Oh, do you think that Masking fluid's any good? We'll have to open it up and see real quick. And then there's some tape in there. <laughs> I would say probably not. Curious if underneath the hard layer, ugh, no. It's all separated and gross, <laughs> okay. We'll put that in the bag to leave the house. And that can actually go in the trash. <laughs> oh, I wonder how old that is. And that box right there is the Jazza creativity kit I bought a couple years ago. And then the plastic bin that I don't think you guys can see, but there's a big plastic bin. It's full of acrylic paint and like wood blocks and stuff like that that my dad gave to me that he ended up with in a motor home that he bought or a fifth wheel that he picked up. And he thought maybe I could do something fun with that. So we'll look into that at some point. I just got distracted because the cat is upside down and her belly's all sprawled out. It's so cute. All right, now that I've actually gone through this and know what's in everything again, I can put it away add it to my inventory list and get it out of my entryway. It'll be a great feeling to walk in here and have this all clean. Was there any art supply in particular that intrigued you guys? Is there anything you would like to see me play with first? Also, is there anything you want me to send to you <laughs> that maybe I don't want? I don't even know what I do and don't want. So if something intrigued you and you're dying to try it, let me know and I'll see if I can send it to you or not. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. And here it is now when we walk in. Oh, it's so much better. This is still stuff for sale right here, and then the plastic tub there with some projects in it that I need to finish. But all this open floor space, when you walk in, everything put away. This is good stuff here. You can help? <laughs> well, you're so helpful. <laughs> you go out and eat my hands, huh? Okay, now that I've been thoroughly slimed, thank you. Are you quite happy with yourself? <laughs> Are you quite happy with yourself? You're too cute. All right, let's see. I got my bag. Ow! <laughs> Are you gonna, I need you to sit. Jack, sit. Oh, good boy, good boy. These are some rods that, I don't think you should eat them. <laughs> He's gonna eat them. Well, that's not what these are. These are my razor antennas. Okay, we're just gonna cut that out. Duh. This, I brought this bag down because I'm supposed to do 
a bag a day. I signed up for the dad. Oh. oh, I sat on my feet too long. I'm broken, 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 I say.